Hey folks, it's Rob from Rob's Movie Collection. Okay, so here's something a little different for me. Here's a question for all of you, you uh, collectors out there. And maybe this subject has been done before, I don't know, but it hasn't been done by me. So I thought I'd ask this to the community. What is our responsibility as collectors? Allow me to expand on that. A lot of entertainers today are getting called out about their past behavior. And whether the accusations are true or hearsay, they are affecting their careers in very real and permanent ways. Now, recently there was a whole uh, hullabaloo about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, which has affected Johnny Depp's future in the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, franchise. But uh, what are we supposed to do as collectors? Now, should we no longer collect Johnny Depp movies because he's been accused of battery? Uh, do we consider whether it's been proven or not? How do we judge the truth and what is our responsibility? Now, let me give you an example. Uh, whenever I go to the dentist, which you know can be a very nerve-wracking experience, I have a little trick that I use to get through it. When I'm in the chair and the dentist starts drilling and I hear the noise and I begin to see the smoke wafting out of my mouth, I think of a comedy bit from Bill Cosby. Now, I've been listening to his comedy albums since I was a kid. I own quite a few of them on LP. And he has this hilarious bit about going to the dentist. So whenever I was in the chair, I would think about this bit and I wouldn't be as nervous. The dentist would always look kind of perplexed at my smile, and I'd always mention the bit after he finished, so he knew that I wasn't insane. Or a masochist. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the Cosby Show, but I did watch it. Uh, as a kid, I routinely watched Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids on Saturday mornings. It was one of my favorite cartoons, and I learned a lot of good lessons from it. So what the hell am I supposed to do now when I go to the dentist? More to the point, what am I supposed to do with all those Bill Cosby comedy albums I have? I have quite a few of them, and like I said, I've had them since I was a kid. I mean, I don't have a huge LP collection, but I've had them for a while, and as most collectors know, it can be kind of hard to let go of your stuff. I'll give you another example. Uh, I do like horror movies, but my tastes are a little more limited. Today's horror fans tend to focus a lot, almost exclusively at times, on slasher movies with a lot of gore and violence. Not really my thing. I, I like more creatures and monsters. Sure, I know some of them can be kind of gory sometimes, but for the most part I go for the classics, that sort of thing. My point is that because of my preferences, I'm a little more limited in what I can like. So, one day I'm flipping through the TV channels and I came across a movie. There was a school bus with a bunch of teenagers stranded out in a field, and they were being attacked by some, some kind of a giant bat-like creature. Cool. Hey, a monster. You know, I figured that that was great. Uh, I came to find out that the movie was called Jeepers Creepers, and there was a sequel called, you guessed it, Jeepers Creepers 2. I think this might have been the second one that I came across. Uh, so, uh, not too long after that, I came across a double disc of both movies for five bucks at Walmart. Score! Hey, you know, that was great. But, as I started looking into it, I read about the director, Victor Salva. Well, it turns out that during the making of his first film, Salva sexually abused the 12-year-old star of the film and even videotaped it. They even found him in possession of child pornography. This guy was convicted and sentenced to three years in jail and ended up serving 15 months. By 1992, he had completed his parole. It was after this that he made these Jeepers Creepers movies. In fact, I also found out that he made one of my favorite movies called Powder, which I've had in my collection for a long time. So what am I supposed to do here? What is my responsibility? Like Cosby, this is a person who was definitely convicted. Do we separate the art from the person? What about people like Woody Allen, where there's no conviction and it's a matter of he said, she said? I'm mostly a fan of his early work like Sleeper and Take the Money and Run, but does that matter? Should I get rid of his movies? Kevin Spacey has had accusations le levied against him. Should I get rid of his films? 
Should I get rid of Superman Returns, which is one of my favorite superhero films about my favorite superhero, just because Spacey plays Lex Luthor? He's not even the main character in the film. When his scandal broke, I had just bought Baby Driver. I mean, I haven't even had a chance to watch it yet. I was just starting to enjoy Louis C.K.'s comedy when his scandal broke. Should we consider the seriousness of the offense? If, is masturbation in front of women, supposedly with permission, I don't know, worthy of less judgment than some of these other accusations? Can I keep the secret life of pets? If we do separate the artist from the action, does this say something about us? Okay, last example. This is something I recently found out. The case of best-selling author Anne Perry. Now, this is something I didn't know about. Uh, and after I found out about it, I asked around and nobody seemed to be aware of it. I've never read an Anne Perry novel, but I work at a library, so I've seen her books for years, and I was aware that she was one of the most successful authors we had. Now, in 1994, Peter Jackson, director of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit films, he made a, a movie called Heavenly Creatures. I think uh, Kate Winslet was in it. Uh, it was about two New Zealand teenage girls who committed murder in 19, uh, 1954. It was called the Parker Hume Murder Case in Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, this really happened. This movie was based on, on these two real girls who really did this. These two girls, Juliet and Pauline, they became friends. Uh, they grew very close, uh, obsessively close, and after a couple of years, one of them, uh, Juliet, I believe, was going to have to move to South Africa. They couldn't bear to be separated, and they saw Pauline's mother as the main obstacle for this. So they took her out into the forest on the pretext of going for a walk, and they killed her. They bludgeoned her to death with a brick and a sock. They had to hit her over 20 times to kill her. They were caught almost immediately, and because they were only about 15, they couldn't get the death penalty, so they were sentenced to five years in jail. So when they were released, they were 20 years old, still at the beginning of their lives. So when this movie, Heavenly Creatures, came out, it was revealed that the girl, Juliet, was actually best-selling author Anne Perry. How did her publishers not know this? Eh, they probably did, but, you know, she was making money for them. By 1994, when this movie came out, she had already published over 14 novels. Now, you would think that this news, this revelation, would end her career, or at least put a big dent in it. But no. To date, she has published over 47 novels. That means that the majority of her work was produced after the world found out that she was a murderer. So, what does that say about our society? We crucify people on the internet because of some old joke that is now considered politically incorrect, and yet we continue to support an author who once committed murder. And some people would say, well, forgiveness, forgiveness, but they're not forgiving other people for a lot less than murder. Her fans have made her a millionaire. The other girl has spent the remainder of her life living very quietly, while Juliet went on to become Anne Perry and made millions right in, I looked it up, mysteries that often involve murders. So, should I get rid of The Secret Life of Pets from my collection because Louis C.K. took his dick out in front of some women? After asking permission, of course. <laughs> what do you guys think? Given how many celebrities have fallen, odds are you have something in your collection from one of these entertainers. And who knows, tomorrow something else can come out about another of your favorites and suddenly a whole chunk of your collection can be affected. Okay, that's it. Uh, let me know what you think about this. I'd be really interested in knowing, uh, either in the comments or I would love to see a video from you. I'm very curious to see how other collectors handle the situation because every day there's more and more stuff in my collection that seems to be affected by this sort of thing. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, that's it. And, uh, yeah, next video will probably be back to fun stuff. But for now, let me know what you think. Okay, bye.